Here we have a simple list of products. You are tasked to add forms so you can create new products and also update existing ones. More often than not, the form used for creating database records is pretty much the same as the one used for updating them. So why create two forms when you can create only one and use it for both? Let me show you how you can achieve this using Blade components. By the way, if you want to follow along, there is a link to the starter project template in the description. Just clone or download the code and follow the installation instructions. Let's start by creating a component for our form. It'll be a simple view component, so use the view flag at the end. Quick tip, by adding the path to our component, we can automatically create a folder our component lives in. So let's create it inside a folder called products. Open the component view and inside the div, add a form tag. We'll come back to this in a minute. For now, let's create a new route for the create product page. As you can see, we already have one route in place. But since we are going to create more routes for the products controller, we might as well create a controller group for it. Use route controller and pass the controller class name. Let's give it a prefix of products and name of products. Now we can move this route inside the group and remove the controller class. Just leave the URI and the action. Let's make sure it still works. And I just need to add the products URI in the route. And it works, okay. Now the new route. Let's call this route create. Action is create as well. And the name is also create. Now let's go to our controller and return a new view. Call it products.create. Create a new view in resources views products called create.blade.php. I will extend from the app layout that is already provided with the project to save some time. Add the named header slot and set the header text to create new product. And finally add the form component we created before. We use dot notation to provide the path of the form component. Go back to the index view and add a link to our create product page. Refresh and click the button and we arrive at our new page. Now we need to start fleshing out our form. Let's start by adding inputs. Add a new div and create a label and a text input for the product name. If we go back and refresh, nothing shows up. Why is that? Well, we need to output the contents of our component by echoing the slot variable. Let's try that one more time and there you go. A very ugly looking input. Let's give it some style. Since I'm going to be using the same classes over and over for all my inputs and labels, we should put them in their own component. Create two more components, call them label and input. By the way, when you install Laravel Breeze in your projects, these are already provided, but I thought it would be a good idea to create our own for learning purposes. Following the same techniques used in Laravel Breeze, we will accept a value prop. Replace this div with a label and echo the value or the slot if no value is provided. Now we use attribute merge to display any provided attributes as well as our default classes. Before we continue, I'll start the compilation process with npm 
run watch. Go back to the create product view and use our new label component. I'll try out the value prop too. All right, nothing changes, which is good. Okay, let's make this block to push the input below the label. Font medium to make it a bit bolder. Text SM to make it a bit smaller and give it a color of gray 700. Perfect. Now open the input component. We will accept disabled as a prop with a default value of false and I'll explain why in just a second. Replace the div with an input and use attribute merge again. Add the input component in the create product view so we can see our changes one by one. By the way, if you ever see this error, remember to self-close the component tag like this. It really threw me off the first time, so now you know. We begin by adding some padding to make it a bit thicker. This one is a personal preference, so leave it out if you want. Now make the corners rounded. Add a little shadow to make it stand out and give it a border with a color of gray 300. To customize the ring that appears when the field is in focus, we can use the focus property and change it a bit. Starting with this default outline, let's remove that with outline none. Next, add a pulper ring around it when it's focused with focus ring purple 300. Finally, make the ring thinner with focus ring 1. It's already looking really good. Now, remember the disabled prop? You might be thinking, why do we need this as a prop? Shouldn't this work like the other attributes, like value or type? Well, technically, yes, it does. But there is a catch. Let me show you. I'll remove the prop for now. When you pass it as a property with no value, it will be rendered like this, where the value is the same as the property name, which looks kinda ugly. And yes, it works exactly the same, but it's kind of a nicer in my opinion. Instead, if we accept it as a prop, we can use a ternary operator to render the disabled property without value, or nothing at all, like this and that looks much better in code. And we all like cleaner code, right? Okay, it's been quite a journey for just a label and an input, but now that we have them, we just need to copy and paste this three times and then change the values for the product price and stock quantity. Add some separation in between those and our form is almost ready. We just need a button to submit the form. Let's add it now. And to be consistent with the theme, let's make it a component as well. Add it to the form and let's start with the styles. Again, we use the attribute merge method, but this time we will merge not only the glass attribute, but also the type, defaulting this value to submit. Okay, let's start with some padding, 4 on the X and 2 on the Y. Now give it a background of purple 400 so that it matches the color scheme of the inputs. Make it rounded with white text, as well as transforming the text to uppercase and make the font smaller. Add tracking widest to make the text more readable. 
now to add a hover transition let's add transition is in and out with a duration of 150 then on hover we will make the background two shades darker also let's make it semi bold okay that looks better we also need a link to cancel the update I'll just make this a simple link same padding as the button gray background rounded uppercase and semi bold small text and tracking widest perfect and we are done with the design back in the form component let's add a prop called method i'll explain why in just a second default the value to get now we need to make a decision based on the method forms don't support put patch or delete methods but laravel has a method directive to spoof this kind of requests let's add a small php snippet here and if the method is either put patch or delete then we assign the value of method to a new variable called spoof method and let's give it a default value as well and we assigned a value of post to method now set the method property like this If we examine the render HTML, we can see that the method is properly assigned by default. Now let's try setting the method as put. And we see that the method is properly set as post, but is case sensitive. If we use lowercase put, it doesn't work. So let's just make it uppercase before checking. We'll use the string helper for this. Now we need to add the method directive. Add an if statement and check for the spoof method variable. If it has a value, then add the method directive with the value of spoof method. Looking at the HTML code, this compiles to a hidden input with the value of put. One more thing that I want to add is the ability to mark my inputs in red when they have validation errors. To accomplish this, we have to make some adjustments to the input component, starting with a small PHP snippet here. I want to check if the errors variable provided by Laravel validation has an entry for the current input. We can use the attributes get method to retrieve the value of the name attribute. I'll use a ternary operation but an if and else statement works as well. When this is true, I'll change some of the classes for the input. Starting with the border, let's make that red 600 and also the ring color, make that red 600 as well. And finally make the text red 600. If there are no errors, we will keep the original class. So let's move that up here and use the class variable instead here. Okay, now we can start adding some code to test the form. First, we need a route. Let's copy the index route and change the method to post. Action is store and name is store. Now in the controller, add the validation logic. We just need all of our inputs to be required. And finally, set the method to post and add the action attribute. Okay, let's give this a try. Ah, oh, right, we didn't add the CSRF directive. Let's fix that in the form component view, right before the if statement here. If we submit the form without any information, we get our validation errors in all of the inputs. Awesome. 
but of course it's always helpful to see the error message so let's go ahead and add that in the input component as well Time to store our product. We do this in the controller with this simple line of code. Once saved, we redirect to the product list. Ok, now we need to be able to update existing records. Let's start with the route. We can copy the create route change the URL to edit and accept the product ID and both the action and the name will be edit. In the product list make the product name a link to the edit route and pass the product ID. Now in the controller, let's use implicit binding to retrieve the product and pass it down to the view. Finally, to save some time, I'll just duplicate the create page and name it edit. I just need to change the header up here to edit product. As you would expect, we will use the same form component, but this time the method will be put and the route will be products update, which we don't have just yet, but we will create it in just a moment. And we need to pass a product ID to this route as well. Now for the value of each input, we use old and the input name. And if that's not available, we use the actual value from the product. And now that you mention it, we should do the same in the create form, but just using old. Okay, before checking this in the browser, we need that update route. We can copy this edit route, make it a put request, change the URL, action, and name. Perfect, let's see how it looks. Hmm, we have links, but we should give them a different color and an underline just to make it more obvious. Let's see, let's make the color purple and give it an underline on hover. Okay, that looks much better. Click on any product and you get to the form with all its values. Alright, here is a task for you. Pause the video and add both the validation and the code to update the product in the database. Once you're done, come back here and we can compare your solution with mine. Ok, go ahead, I'll wait. A few moments later. Alright, let's add the validation for updating a product. We can pretty much copy and paste that from the store method. We use implicit binding again to get the product and call the update method on it, passing the name, price and in stock parameters from the request. Finally, redirect to the product list. Let's see if the validation works and it does. Now change the price, name, and stock quantity and save. And the product is updated in the database. Ok, that will be all for this video. I hope you found it helpful and I'll see you in the next one.